You're listening to the Law of Attraction Radio Network. International success coach and noted author, Constance Arnold, delivers life-changing strategies through her own spiritual practices, as well as with best-selling authors and experts that she interviews. Think, Believe, and Manifest is specially designed to empower your mind and words to work for you and to bring about a life you've been dreaming of. And now, here's Constance Arnold. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Law of Attraction Radio Network. And of course, you know who I am. I am Constance Arnold, host of the Think, Believe, and Manifest talk show. Guess what? I'm so excited that you made a decision to join me from all over the world. Let me see. This week, I want to shout out to Zimbabwe, to my listeners in Melbourne, Australia. And of course, I can't forget about New Zealand and all of my listeners in Canada. Canada. I want to say that if you have made a decision to listen to my show today, that actually it's a setup because the Spirit of God has attracted you here so that you can receive the downloads, the insight, the how to's, so that you can move from where you are to where you desire to be. Well, how are you doing today? I am doing really well. It is a beautiful, marvelous day here in Atlanta. I'm looking out of my window at the beautiful blue skies and uh, it kind of feels like summertime, but uh, I'm just so, so grateful to have the opportunity to share with you today. And man, you better hold on. You better put your seatbelt on today because I have a woman, uh, Sonia Jackson Miles, who's going to really uh, change your world. We're going to be talking about dream walking. And, uh, you know, I'm just so big on how do we get those dreams from the inside of us out uh, in practical everyday steps. So I did give a shout out to Zimbabwe. And the reason I did is because I've received a couple of emails. I just want to read them really quick. Uh, My listener in Zimbabwe said, Constance, I love the way you always think about third world cultures and our mindset. And you always have your guests to address specific how-tos. And, you know, thank you so much, Zimbabwe. And the reason I do is because universal principles will apply, can apply to anyone who will work them. So thank you for that. And then my wonderful listener in Melbourne, Australia, he said, Constance, I'm an alpha male. Maybe I need to lower my voice. And he said, I just love the format of your show. You don't just have all females. And then in parentheses, He said, because a lot of self-help shows do, but you have a lot of alpha males and I love the diversity and the mixture. And for my listener in Melbourne, that is intentional. (laughs) If you notice, I may have on an alpha male and then a female and then I'll teach because we're trying to really reach everyone. And then lastly, my listener in Canada said, Constance, I love the way you always ask So what would that look like in the lives of my listeners? Uh, Thank you so much for that because it really helps to give listeners a specific how-to. I just believe that motivation and inspiration is not enough, but we need to know the how-tos. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Well, let me see. Of course, you guys know that you can visit my website of fulfillingyourpurpose.com. Take a look at my coaching. You can listen to people, clients that I've coached and uh, also clients where I've trained. Check it out. And of course, you can email me at Constance at fulfillingyourpurpose.com. Guess what, guys? I think that is it, but you better get ready. I'm going to a commercial break. Then I'm going to be right back with Sonya Jackson Miles. So stay tuned. Are you planning a motivational or training event for your company or organization? Look no further. Constance Arnold is an experienced, dynamic, and inspirational speaker and trainer. Constance has helped thousands and has a proven track record of 25 years as a keynote and leadership trainer for both private and public sector. Constance provides the latest cutting-edge breakthrough transformational principles that will align with your organization's vision. Participants will receive specific how-tos for both personal and professional empowerment. 
contact Constance and partner with her to begin creating your next successful event. Her website is www.fulfillingyourpurpose.com and email is Constance at fulfillingyourpurpose.com. Are you feeling stuck? Are you ready to live a life beyond your wildest dream? Constance Arnold is a seasoned and experienced professional licensed counselor for 25 years and a certified success life coach and would love to partner with you to create your dreams. She's coached and trained over 10,000 clients on five continents and has a proven track record of success. Constance will assist you in getting a clear vision for your life and develop customized strategies, projects, and action steps to begin manifesting your dream. Contact her today at Constance at FulfillingYourPurpose.com and visit her website at FulfillingYourPurpose.com. Okay, guys, I'm back and I'm really, really excited about my guest today. You're going to be so blessed. And I don't even know where to start with her, but just let me give you just a short intro of who she is. Sonia Jackson Miles is the founder of the Sister Accord and the author of the Sister Accord, 51 Ways to Love Your Sister. So before she launched her Sister Accord business full time, she was an executive in corporate America for over 20 years and she managed over 20 billion. That's B folks in in spin. Uh, And then her last corporate role was as P&G's, that's Procter & Gamble for my international listeners, director of Globing Packaging Purchases, where she managed $6 billion in spin. This sister has it going on. She was named one of Essence Magazine's Women of Power in 2008, Bloomberg Reports History Makers in 2009, Trumpet Award Foundation Women in High Heels in 2010. Oh, my goodness. Uh, and was named one of Black Enterprises Magazine Top Executives in Marketing and Advertising in 2012. Let's see what else can I say. Uh, She was also nominated, I have it somewhere, for the NAACP Award. So she has has it going on. And if I kept uh, talking about who she was, you would never get a chance to meet her. So Sonia Jackson Miles, welcome to the Law of Attraction Radio Network. Well, hello, my beautiful sister. It is an honor to be here with you this afternoon. I tell you, you have it going on. Okay, you have so many honors. I see it now. She was nominated for a 2013 uh, NAACP Image Award in the debut author category for her book, The Sister Accord. I tell you, we are so honored to have you here. And I met Sonia on the cruise. (laughs) (laughs) We were on the Tom Joyner Foundation cruise and she was conducting a seminar and I'm like, who is that? (laughs) I had my pad. I said, let me take some notes. (laughs) Well, I tell you, it was was love at first sight because I just felt your spirit from the moment I saw you. Yeah. And I think you were teaching on great leaders have great relationships. Exactly. That's exactly what I was teaching. Right. So let's just get started. I mean, where do I even start with you, Sonia? (laughs) My God. Um, So so here you are. Uh, I want I want you to share with listeners a little bit about uh, your story. Here you are, you know, making all of this money in charge yes. of billions of dollars, yes. traveling yes. global, got it going on, got connections. And what is happening on the inside of you that you begin to make a shift that it's time for you to do something different? Well, see, our spirits and souls long to do what they were created to do. They long for it. And so when we're not operating in it consistently, you can have feelings of sadness, doubt, depression. I mean, you can feel all kinds of things. For me, it was I heard God clearly saying, I've called you to do this thing and you're running. You're running from me. And I need you to recognize that the thing I've created you to do is not about you. It's about the people 
that I have assigned to you that you've been called to serve. And so I need you to do this work so that people born and yet to be born can then do the things that they were created to do as well. When I recognized the magnitude of that, I knew that although I was successful in my job at Procter & Gamble, it wasn't what I was created to do. See, God had helped me to be successful. A lot of times what we will confuse is the fact that we're successful with what we were created to do. And so for me, I began to go on this journey of self-discovery and really understanding my true meaning and reason for living. And I had um, uh, been asked to speak at an inaugural event for President Obama's first inauguration on Capitol Hill, Mm -hmm. went to sleep one night, prayed about it, went to sleep one night, and I saw the sister accord resolution in my dream. I saw my book. I saw all of these faces of women and girls. I did not know where I was or, you know, who I was speaking to, but I saw everything come to life in this dream, got up and wrote everything out and then began to get afraid, which is what we do. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) So so, so for listeners, Sonia, um, for listeners, when you say God, a lot of my listeners may say sore. So does that mean that you, you were quiet and this began to download absolutely. to you? Is that absolutely, happened? absolutely. However you experience um, that quietness, that stillness, um, absolutely. That's what I had to do. I had to sit still long enough to really, truly tap into who I was as a person. And and that revelation that came from the obedience of doing that work, because it is work, it takes a level of intentionality. And so when I did that, that's when I began to really see how all of this could come together. And so for someone who may have a great job and and uh, like I said, you were global. I can't even yes. imagine the connections and the influence that you had. And then they might feel this pulling, uh, yes. uh, you know, there is something more or yearning. Uh, yes. uh, 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 and, and so you would say to them, they maybe need to get quiet. Absolutely. And, and then over time, would God download that for them? What would that look like? So there's work involved with it, which is why I created dream walking. But let me talk a, a, a minute about being still okay? because so many of us are so busy and we like to say that we're busy. Yeah. We like that. <laughs> and we're running from here to there and everywhere. And, you know, it's a myth. And I talk about this multitasking, you know, oh yes, I can do 50 things at one time. No, no, you can't do it effectively. And so it takes a level of discipline to really, truly go on this journey that I'm talking about that is required and necessary to understand very deeply who you are and why you're here. And so for me, the process was um, why I created Dreamwalking. And so Dreamwalking is a process, it's a structured program and process that takes your dream from your heart. So think about the things that really excite you, that bring you joy. What are those things that you go to sleep thinking about? You wake up thinking about, it's just a part of who you are. And then you think about, okay, what's the vision? Now that I understand this passion that's burning, what's the vision? How can I see it? How can I talk about it in a way where other people can understand what I'm talking about and then engage in what I'm talking about, buy into what I'm talking about? And then how do you take it to the hands? So the hands, it's all about the work that's required. So often we think these things are going to just happen. They are not going to just happen. You have to have a plan. You have to think about the steps how to order your steps so that you do things decently and in order and with excellence. And then the feet. How do you walk in purpose? What does it look like? What does it feel like? How do you make sure that you are consistently showing up 
walking in the thing that you were created to do. And so that is what the dream walking process was. And it's everything that I had to go through in order to bring my dreams to life. Okay. And so uh, let's talk to listeners about this for a minute, Sonia. So here you were in a powerful job, Mm -hmm. but then which prepared you for the higher purpose that God has for you. So would you say to listeners that possibly what they might have done or are doing might be preparing them for their higher purpose? Absolutely. 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 And when I think back, you know, that there's a hymn that says, when I look over my life and I think things over. Yeah, I know (laughs) that one. When I think about how I was being prepared, one of the things that was that became clear to me is it was in those deep, dark places. It was in those painful moments that I wanted to avoid that really helped me to be able to shape my company, the structure of it, how I would serve people as an entrepreneur. And so often we want to escape the pain. We want to escape those difficult times. But it was all of those things that I learned uh, being in corporate America for over 20 years, all of the things that I learned that helped to shape my leadership style, how I engage, how I served people. uh, That's really where the magic happened for me. And so I didn't think about that until later. But it absolutely was preparing me for every single thing that I'm doing today. And so, Sonia, how did you deal with fear? Once again, with oh, oh big listeners, <laughs> I, I mean, I know when I when I left my job and I signed <sighs> my papers, resignation papers, my hand was shaking. They yes. like, Miss Arnold, do you need another pen? I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> it took me like five minutes to even sign yeah. my name. So how did you deal with fear? you know, from leaving this awesome position, career, and venturing out into your purpose? What was that like for you? And what can you share with listeners? So I'm going to tell you a funny story that okay. people laugh. People laugh at it, but I, but I believe in being transparent. <laughs> um, I had for over, now I'm only 21, so I don't want anyone to it, do girl. the math, but... <laughs> But uh, for over 40 years, I had a phobia of dogs. Mm. And when I say phobia, I mean a true phobia, not just scared of dogs, a true phobia. And so uh, (laughs) I had a situation where my um, global leader had an event at his home, a dinner, and invited all of our global team together. And I said to him, because I knew he had a dog, I asked him to put his dog away. Now, that in and of itself is, is a problem for a lot of dog lovers. You oh, know? I'm, you I'm one have... of them. I would have had an attitude like, who does she think she is? Exactly. Exactly. So I said, I'm never going to be promoted again because I'm asking this question. Um, but he said, sure, Sonia, we'll put the dog away. Well, in the middle of the dinner, Um, someone let the dog out. And I always say, you remember that song? Who let the dogs out? (laughs) Well, the dog came to who? You. Me. (laughs) Out of all those people in that room, the dog came straight for me. And I was screaming. I was jumping on my um, boss's leather, nice, beautiful leather couch with my heels on. I mean, I was panicked and so embarrassed. And it was at that moment that I said, Sonia, you have got to face this fear. You have to conquer it. You have to do whatever you need to because it is controlling your life in ways that are manifesting themselves in not so positive ways. Right. Mm -hmm. So I said, "Okay, what am I going to do besides pray? Because a lot of times people just want to pray, but there's no action behind it. Yeah. So I said, what's the action going to be? Well, I decided to go and buy a dog. Wow. Wow. Can you believe it? I still can't. No one in my family can believe it because I had this phobia for so long. And the process of getting to know, and I named him Socrates. He's a 
beautiful Bichon Frise. And the process of getting to know him and love him helped me to face other fears in my life. It gave me the courage to then address, okay, Sonia, you believe that you've been called to serve with the sister accord. You can't do it while working this amazing job that you have. What are you going to do? And so having Socrates and and learning and, and establishing this relationship and, and loving something that I feared for so long because I had conjured up in my mind what it would be like simply based on the fact that I was chased by dogs in my childhood. But I had never resolved and addressed what had happened in my childhood. So so Socrates gave me the opportunity to finally address it and recognize that I had made up a lot of stories in my mind about what the experience would be with a dog that were not true. And so after I went from being afraid to loving something so deeply, it gave me the power and courage and strength to leave my role that I, I absolutely loved my job. Um, and it gave me the courage to, to leave it. Wow. That's an amazing story. So it sounds like that people, oh my gosh. you know, as they are beginning to walk towards their dream or walk fully in their dreams, they really need to address limiting beliefs and Absolutely. all those and, and attitudes and mindsets. So, so what would you say to listeners about dealing with beliefs, attitudes, and just their mindset period? Yes. And, you know, we engage a lot in self-sabotage. Right? right. As as individuals. And so we have to get a hold of that in our minds. And I say this oftentimes with so many of my clients. The mental burdens that we carry because we've made up these stories and these narratives are much more heavy than real burden, than burdens connected to things that have actually happened in our lives. OK. And so we have to recognize the power of our mind. And when we get control of it, how it can take us to another level of understanding the infinite possibilities for our lives, because there are infinite possibilities. Yes. What happens true. for us is we begin to put boxes around things. And I'll give you an example. OK. When I presented the sister court on Capitol Hill, there were people from all over the world there. And one of the follow up conversations that uh, I had was the government of Tanzania called me and said, hey, your sister court is transforming lives in our country. And I said, what? <laughs> because I didn't you know, I just planned on presenting this sister court at the event on Capitol Hill. And then I was going to go back to my my amazing job. I had no intention of being an entrepreneur. That was never my dream. And so when I got the call from the government of Tanzania and understanding that my words were transforming other people's lives, it, 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 it made me pause. And I said, wow. And they invited me to come speak in the country and to uh, also they were wanted to have a sister accord day. Well, what do you think my response was? Yes. Or was it? No. no? <laughs> <laughs> it was no, because I had conjured up in my mind that, oh, I don't want my boss or my peers or my team to think that I'm not engaged or that I'm not here, fully present and committed. Yeah. Get that. So I said no. When I should have said yes, and I should have asked my leader and engaged with my leaders to tell them what was going on. And I'm sure they would have said, oh, my gosh, Sonia, that's an amazing opportunity because they, they were that supportive. But because I had told myself all of these things 
that weren't true, I don't believe. Um, I said no to something that I should have said yes to. And so what the, 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 the important part of the mental aspect of getting that in control is to make sure that you can say yes to the things that you need to say yes to and no to the things that you really should be saying no to. I was doing the opposite. But you have to create space for it in your mind, understanding those possibilities and believing that you have the power to actually bring those things to life. And so here you are walking out. Your dream is just beginning for you. And you mentioned uh, you were concerned about possibly what your organization, you know, your <laughs> boss, et cetera. So for other people who are walking out their dream or in the process of doing that, what, to, what about relationships? Because, you know, we're always thinking about, you know, how important are is having great relationships in your life. How do we leave yes. behind those relationships with people who are great people, but they mm -hmm. just are not uh, going toward your dream? What would that look uh, like for listeners? Oh, wow, sister. How much time do you have? <laughs> I could I could talk to you all night and all week and all month about this because it is so important to ensure that you are surrounding yourself with like-minded people on this journey. Mm -hmm. People who cannot support you. Cause see, you know, for me, if my friend came and told me that they had a particular dream, um, even if I didn't quite understand it, I would be engaged and I would be saying, how can I serve you? Mm -hmm. What can I do for you? Right. Right. When you have people who cannot support you going to your next level of excellence, because that's all it is when you bring your dreams to life. It's your next level of excellence. And so if you have people around you who will t just tear you down, who don't support in word and deed, who can't help you dream and make it bigger and and hold your hand and your heart then you have to make sure that you understand where to place them in your life. One of the tools that I use is a bullseye. And if your listeners would just imagine a bullseye where there's that small center space. Mm -hmm. I often talk to my clients about the fact that we allow people in that center space who don't deserve to be there and who haven't earned the right to be there. Ooh, we gotta, just give I, it away. I got to say hallelujah right there. Keep going. <laughs> we just give it away, sister. Yeah. And so I'm like, no, you cannot do that. They may not belong on the bullseye at all. Maybe they belong on the outer ring. But absolutely do not allow people to reside and take up space in that center when they haven't earned it and when they don't deserve it. And that's what happens. So that's where the distraction comes in, because we are spending time with people who can't see nor support. Now, let me say this. Oftentimes, people may not have the skill set to help you. OK, right. that doesn't mean that we look down on them. Mm -hmm. It's just making sure that you have the right perspective about how you spend your time and who you're spending it with. Okay. So this is not at all about, Oh, I'm better than you because I got it together or that I know my purpose or whatever. No, we don't operate like that. This is about love for ourselves and love for others. But what's important is, is that you guard your heart and your space so that you can focus on the things that you really truly need to focus on. So true. So when you left your position and you moved away, I'm sure you had developed really strong relationships right. there. Right. So what was that like for you? Did you miss them or was your vision so powerful? You just gradually moved away from them. What would you say to listeners about that? Well, what's interesting is this. Um, I have an amazing network of people that I've grown up with in the business, um, folks that I've gone to college and university with, uh, just an amazing network of people. 
And I haven't tapped into even, you know, one tenth of it as I became an entrepreneur. And what's really beautiful to me is that I have had so many people and even my my former company gave money to my foundation to support my vision. Now, get that. Now, you know that that is nothing but God, you know, (laughs) for them to invest in my in my dream and vision with my foundation. And so um, I absolutely miss the people. I absolutely. I mean, we had fun. I made sure in my organization we had fun. We looked forward to seeing each other and supporting each other. But that's the kind of space I created. That's the kind of culture that I created. And so it was tough, um, you know, leaving uh, from that perspective. But my goodness, when I decided that I was going to go on this journey of doing what I was created to do, I have so much joy, literally. And joy can exist in the midst of chaos. Happiness is fleeting. So this is why I talk to my clients about seeking joy versus happiness. Happiness is circumstantial. But the joy that I have is so great that I know this is exactly what I should be doing. Even on those tough days or days that I feel like giving up, I can still have joy because the joy is connected very deeply to the fact that I know that I'm doing what I was created to do. Yeah, that's so true. I was just telling someone uh, this morning that I said, you know, I can't I can't believe that I've actually been in my consulting business for 20 years. And wow. I said, yeah, since 1999. Kudos to you. <laughs> Yay, I'm clapping for You're myself. You're my role model. You're my role model. <laughs> Nothing but the grace of God. And I told them, I said, you know, there were some tough years, but mm. Out of it, because like you said, I knew I was in my purpose. I gained, never allow your circumstances to take from you. Always gain from them, you know, gain an upgrade. So I was telling him, I said, but, you know, it's been some of, like you said, some of the most creative, just Mm -hmm. uh, remarkable, extraordinary days and years uh, of my life because I was walking in my purpose. Yes. And, you know, and so, Sonia, you know, this is the law of attraction radio network. And a yes. lot of my listeners are into visualization and meditation mm-hmm. and all of that. Mm-hmm. But, honey, I tell people the, the last part of attraction is action. So yes. for our dream walkers, how important is it to have a plan or, oh, take, or, boy. or, or, or take action? Because a lot of people say, I oh. have this dream, but I don't know what to do. What would you yeah. say to listeners? The action plan is so critically important because, you know, as human, we have so many things swirling around in our heads. Mm -hmm. If you don't get it out of your head and onto paper, it's difficult to in a very and and again, you remember, I always talk about operating in excellence. Yeah, it's difficult to operate in excellence, recognizing the steps that you should be taking. And so the action plan is a big part of what I do with my program once we've done all the mental work. Mm -hmm. See, what a lot of people do is they jump to the action plan before they're ready. Okay. That ain't nothing but the truth. Yeah. So I don't (laughs) want your listeners to say, oh, I just need to go do a plan. No, you've got to do this work on self first. Then... You can put the plan together so that you can do things decently and in order. And so the action plan is a big part of what I teach, Um, making sure that you have a specific action plan. A lot of times people put very vague things on the action plan. No, you need very specific actions. You need to prioritize them. Do you need help from someone to get started? Do you need help from someone to complete it? When will you complete it? So I give my dream walkers deadlines so that they can make sure that they are moving forward each and every day uh, with a sense of urgency, because we have to remember that these dreams, these goals, these aspirations are not about us. They're for the people that we've been called to serve. And so action planning is a big part of what I teach. Wow, that's powerful. And we're going to have you talk more about your dream walking um 
ebook and your dream walking online course is powerful. I'm going to tell y'all in advance before she even tell you, you know, Constance, I wouldn't even say anything, but once she tells you about it, I mean, this one, this woman is a woman of excellence. What's your mantra about excellence, Sonia? There is always a seat at the table for excellence. Focus on being excellent. You know, I have researched her. I know everything about her. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and her dream walking uh, online course is powerful and it's detail and it's in a spirit of excellence. So at the end, get your credit card out because once she tells you, <laughs> I, I want you to go and get it at the end, Sonia. We'll talk about that more in detail. But, you okay. know, you've mentioned the sister accord. Explain what that is. How does that work? And man, how are you impacting the world with that? So in my over 20 years um, in corporate America, I had a mentee from every continent with the exception of Antarctica. Wow. And I don't care what socioeconomic background, race, creed, color, religion, what have you. My female mentees were coming and talking to me about things that were very different than my male mentees. My male mentees were coming and saying, Sonia, I have this amazing innovative idea. I want you to help me flesh it out. Let's talk this. Let's talk that. My female mentees were coming and saying, I'm having a problem with Linda. You know, I don't like working for Cheryl. She's a woman and she's driving me crazy. And I started to see patterns. And so my mind was automatically shifting to, well, what's the solution? Little did I know that God would give it to me in a dream. Mm. The solution is the sister, of course. So I have another mantra. Mean girls grow up to be mean women if there's no intervention. Mm -hmm. The sister accord is the intervention. We have to have an intervention on the way we treat each other as females. What we have to recognize is we're socialized to not like each other. And this is all around the world. Okay, this is not just a U.S. thing. We are socialized to not like each other. And so what happens is this. And I'll give you an example. People magazine, people magazine. Who wore it best? Yeah. Do they ever put two men next to each other? No. I have never in my life seen them put two men next to each other. But what they do is they put two women next to each other. And then girls, women, because that's who typically they're targeting, have to pick. So someone's cuter, Mm -hmm. someone's thinner, someone's smarter, someone's better. So we grow up with this whole notion of we can't collaborate We must compete. I got to compete for the man. I got to compete for the boy. It's always this notion of if I help you, if I do anything to serve you, then I am harming myself. So it's a scarcity mentality that we grow up with. And what my programs do is bring the principles of the sister accord to life. Those 51 ways. And it brings these principles of of the jewels. I call them the jewels. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and selflessness. It brings these to life in ways that women can then learn how to love themselves. Because, see, we're, we're lacking love for ourselves. When you get comfortable in your own skin, then you will begin to see other women as an extension of yourself. And you'll be figuring out ways, you'll be running to figure out ways to help them. Just like you and I. I was so like, true. after you and I talked, I was like, what can I do to serve her? Yeah. You were saying, oh, you were saying the same thing. That's the kind of collaboration that I want to see all over the world. So my goal is a billion girls and women. I was at University of uh, Michigan talking to the engineering students. And one young lady from China said, no, Miss Sonia, you got to go for three billion. I said, wait a minute. <laughs> Let me just get the, to one billion first. But the sister accord is curriculum. So now I am being integrated into high schools and elementary schools. 
uh, in middle schools across the country. Um, so I have the Sister Accord Leadership Development Program. We have Sister Accord Tea Parties, where we bring adult women and, and high school girls together. Um, and then I introduced the platform, The Power of Sisterhood and Leadership, to companies so that we can dispel all and get rid of the mean girl behavior in the workplace that is really impact negatively impacting profitability and productivity in our places of work. And so the sister accord has a number of different ways, but I call it my and strategy because I knew I had to get to girls and women in order to correct this, this behavior that we have unfortunately seen be so prevalent. And now in reality TV, it is made much more prominent. Oh, you know, I live in Atlanta. Somebody I know. Asked, so, somebody asked me, they said, well, uh, are you one of the Atlanta housewives? They were one of my international clients. And I don't have anything against the Atlanta housewives. Nope. Uh, but I said, no, but just the image that goes out, you know. And, you know, Sonia was talking about uh, after we spoke and she said, well, is there anything I can do for you? And my thinking was, what can I do for her? How can I help to assist her in her success? And and this is just exhibit A. And the reason that we both can do that is because we, we don't have a lack mentality. We That's understand right. that there's unlimited abundance That's and right. clients. I can promote her That's stuff. Right. I'm going to be promoting her, wishing her That's nothing right. but the best because it's a universal law that That's whatever right. you make happen for somebody else comes back yes, to you. It does. It really does. Right. <laughs> and you know, Sonia, I've heard so many women say, well, you know, I got this big dream, but you know, you can't really talk to another woman yeah. about that. Yeah. And that's not true. No, no. Now, I will say to you, be cognizant of who you're spending your time with. So I'll go back to Absolutely. what I what I shared earlier, which is really important in, in understanding the kind of people that you're dealing with. I oftentimes in my sessions will have women say, I can't believe Sarah did that to me. And I say, whoa, 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 let's stop for a minute. Um, let's talk a bit about your history with Sarah. Um, has Sarah shown you that she would do this to other people? Well, yeah. Did Sarah do some things before that were red flags and you ignored them or you made excuses for them? Oh, yeah, I did. Well, then you shouldn't have been surprised that Sarah treated you that way. So so a lot of times, again, we're the ones who are in control of these things and we're not paying attention and we're not being um, cognizant of who we are uh, allowing in that secret space. So true. You know, once again, at the end of the show, I'm going to, um, you know, have give you an opportunity to, to share with people how they can, you know, maybe get in one of your tea groups, et cetera. But I want to ask you something personal. I want to get in your business just a little bit, Sonia. Yeah. So, so you went from executive yeah. to entrepreneur. What does it feel like to be living the life of your dreams and living life on purpose? Man, I, I cannot even articulate to you. People tell me that I'm glowing and I look at pictures of myself before I left and pictures now or or I'll look at Dreamwalkers uh, pictures before we started the process and after. I got to tell you, there's a glow and I got to believe that what it is, is it's 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 radiating from the inside. I can't give you any other explanation. It feels so amazing. Even when I'm waiting on checks from cli from clients and, you know, and bills have to are, are due oh, and, you know, that can be a, a stressful period of time. I am still walking in so much joy. I can't I can't even articulate it to you. I can't so, even put it into words. So what do you do during difficult times or during times where you might feel frustrated? Pray. You pray. OK, tell our listeners kind of what your ritual is there. So I have go to scriptures um, that I have, um, you know, for me in, in my particular faith that I, I I'm a Christian. So I make sure that I go to um, my prayer uh, closet and I just seek his face. I'm like, these are the things that you promised me. Um, so I'm going to lean on those things. And my relationship with God has gotten to a place that 
quite frankly, I thought I had a great relationship with God, but it wasn't until I've gone through this process that I really learned just how deep um, my relationship is. And I think that's also a big part of my joy that I have. Um, so for me, um, Jeremiah 29, 11 is a big, um, part of my, um, every day. And I do my self affirmations and prayers and meditation in the mornings. And so, um, for, I know the plans that I have for you said the Lord, and those plans are good. And so when I remind myself that his plans for me are good, and and they're not to harm me. I'm like, well, gosh, I need to just make sure I keep seeking his face so that I understand what those plans are. Another one that I spend a lot of time on, well, 23rd Psalm um, is 1 Corinthians 2, 9. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, and the mind cannot conceive what God has in store for those who love him. And so I wait in expectancy, even when it's tough, even when I feel like giving up. Um, and that has been the key to me being able to persevere. So one of the things in dream walking that I talk about is your bounce back. We're all going to go through some stuff. Mm-hmm. And by the way, when you are really serious about um, walking in purpose, the fiery darts come even faster and harder. That's so an it's all it's, it's all designed to get you off task and off focus. OK. So how do you balance family? You have three children, I believe, and a dog. Two, 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 we had two, okay. two boys. Okay. Yes. Two, I actually two had a miscarriage. Children. Yep, you're right, though. A dog I, and a husband. How do you manage that? Yeah, so I actually had a miscarriage after my youngest son. So I almost had three, mm-hmm. um, under three. But um, the balance is, the, is probably one of the, the most challenging things that I had to deal with um, in corporate America. I mean, that was hard. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because I had to travel a lot. And so um, my husband would, uh, you know, be home because his job didn't, um, he didn't um, have to travel as much. Um, But that balance is probably one of the toughest things. It's really hard. And so for me, What I do is and what I did was uh, make space to be present. Mm -hmm. When I'm at home, I'm at home. I'm shutting (laughs) it down. And I didn't do that early on in my career. I I allowed too much of that uh, work to have to come home because I was building and I was trying to make sure that I was, um, you know, having these amazing results. Right. Um, but I had to get to a place of establishing some boundaries. I didn't do that early on in my career. And yeah. so I would say to people, establish those boundaries. Uh, what I do now is I try to do as much as I can from home. I have my online program so I don't have to travel as yeah. much, but I still do travel a lot. Um, I try to make sure that when it's family time that I can shut down and um, engage. So my sons and I love going to the movies. So we we do a lot of that. Mm -hmm. We love to travel to places. Um, But as an entrepreneur, uh, especially since I'm still in the build phase, you know, there are a lot of hours. I'm working a lot. I'm working a lot. And so balance, um, I, I, I think people defining balance for them um, is very important. Don't use someone else's, uh, description, uh, or definition of balance. It has to be what works well for you and your family and what might work for, well for me may not work well for someone else. So true. So Sonia, we got about five minutes. I want you to give the listeners just, just detailed insight into your dream walking ebook and online program and your sister accord and all of your contact information, email, websites, yes. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> oh boy. Well, here we go. Here we okay. go. <laughs> 
Well, you know, dream walking is so special to me. I actually created in partnership with my um, partnership with Disney. Um, and what a, an amazing company to talk about dreaming. Yes. Uh, I sit on the advisory um, board for their speakers resource group and helping to advise the Disney Dreamers Academy with Steve Harvey and Essence Magazine. And so uh, I actually created Dreamwalking because so many people would always ask me, how did you create a company that's so, been so successful? You know, what did you do? And so I really wanted to share with people what I do. And so all of the homework and exercises and things that I teach, principles that I teach as part of Dreamwalking is everything that I went through. So it's not theory, it's practical application. And so um, it's a six week online program. And then I work individually uh, with each person in the group mm -hmm. to actually put their plan together. And I give some branding and some insights um, on marketing. And it's just so incredibly fun. Uh, a lot of hard work. But when you get to the other side, as people have said, um, you know, it's life changing. I think one of the most powerful things uh, Terry Ellis from In Vogue uh, said to me was that you gave me a sense of self. I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, somebody who's been traveling all around the world and, you know, nominated famous. for awards and famous. And I gave you a sense of self. Do you know how powerful she is now because she knows who she is? For sure. Wow. You know, so so those kinds of so I work with celebrities, I work with CEOs, I work with housewives, I work with everyone because we all have something that was planted in us as we were formed in our mother's womb. So dreamwalkingonlinecourse.com is where you can get additional information. I also have Sonia Jackson Miles and Sonia is S-O-N-I-A Jackson Miles, M-Y-L-E-S dot com. And that's where you can get my free ebook, Seven Essential Steps to Bringing Your Dream to Life. I wanted to just give people a, a, just a gift that they didn't even have to pay for that really helps to stimulate and stir up the gifts that they have. And then um, my next book that's coming out is 51 Ways to Love Your Children. So I'm so excited Yahoo! about. Congratulations. Yes, yes, that's coming out next month. And so I'm excited about that. Again, we've got to get to a place where we are taking our children to their next level of excellence and, and stopping cycles of dysfunction. We normalize dysfunction way too much. Um, and making sure that we address the things that, that get in the way of our children being healthy and um, positive, productive citizens. So I'm really, really excited about that. And um, what about the about Sister Accord? What about that? The Sister Accord is the sisteraccord.com. And I have the book, 51 Ways to Love Your Sister. We also have a jewelry collection, which I'm so Ooh, proud of. I didn't notice um, that. Yes, yes. We have jewelry, which has been selling. And we've just been so blessed. I partnered with another woman um, who's a jewelry designer. And, and one plus one equals 1,000 because we've come together. Mm -hmm. um, and so, again, debunking that whole, um, you know, women can't work together. Um and so a uh, collaboration is really king. And so uh, with the Sister Accord, we have programs where I go into companies, where I am in school systems. So I would love to take this um, all around the world. Um, so I'm hopeful that, um, you know, I'll hear from some of your listeners. But uh, the SisterAccord.com is where you can. Uh, we have T-shirts and, um, you know, um, posters and all kinds of fun things um, that are available for sale on the Sister Accord uh, website as well. Well, you know, Sonia, I've got to have you back because we need to spend more time <laughs> with, I know. with the Sister Accord. So I'm going to have you back. Okay. Oh, thank uh, so, you. So guys, oh, I forgot to give my, um, you asked me to give my social media too. Did uh -huh, you ask? Absolutely. Okay. I didn't, but so, go ahead. Oh, okay. So I am the Sister Accord on Instagram and um, Twitter. And I am on Facebook, The Sister Accord. I have a, a fan page. And then I'm Sonia Jackson Miles for my personal page uh, as well. 
what can I say? My goodness, except I'm going to have you back. And so, guys, I want you to really, a lot of you have been praying, seeking, searching. And so God has spoken to you today. So I'm going to really strongly encourage you to go to her website and take advantage of, you know, just her knowledge, her, her, her expertise, her insight, her years of experience, you know, you know, just in the corporate world and now as an entrepreneur. And you're just a blessing to the world, Miss Sonia. And I'm oh. going to have you back. Will you come oh, back? Absolutely. I just love you and thank I thank you. you. And I just want to know and we'll be talking. How can I serve you? What can I do to bless you as well? So um, we'll be talking about that. We'll be talking and uh, so, okay, world, you heard her say she gave her word. She's coming back. So I'm going to have her back in a couple of weeks. So everybody, as I say every week, you may not know it or feel it, but the love of God surrounds you. And you know that I am just crazy about you and that I adore you and that I believe in you. And I just want you to think and say out loud, something good is going to happen to me and through me. Make it a great week. Thank you for listening to Think, Believe, and Manifest. Constance Arnold will be back next week with another great show just for you. For more information, please visit fulfillingyourpurpose.com. Hi, it's Jamie, Progressive's Employee of the Month, two months in a row. Leave a message at the... Hi, Jamie. It's me, Jamie. I just had a new idea for our song about the Name Your Price tool. So when it's like, tell us what you want to pay, hey, 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 and the trombone goes, blah, 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 and you say, we'll help you find coverage options to fit your budget. Then we just all do finger snaps while a choir goes, savings coming at ya, savings coming at ya. Yes? No? Maybe? Anyway, see your practice tonight. I got new lyrics for the rap break. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Hi, it's Jamie, Progressive number one, number two employee. Leave a message at the... Hey, Jamie. It's me, Jamie. This is your daily pep talk. I know it's been rough going ever since people found out about your acapella group, Mad Harmony, but you will bounce back. I mean, you're the guy always helping people find coverage options with the Name Your Price tool. It should be you giving me the pep talk. Now get out there, hit that high note, and take Mad Harmony all the way to nationals this year! Sorry, this is pitchy. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law.